British government says it has 800,000 doses of the vaccine ready to go, with millions more being produced at this Pfizer plant in Belgium. The National Health Service will start administering vaccinations next Monday morning. A priority list has been published on who will get it first. So it will start with the most elderly and with people in care homes uh, and, of course, their carers uh, to make sure that, that uh, others don't catch it. Uh, and then essentially it comes down the age range. Um, NHS uh, staff are also uh, high on that priority list. Uh, and also the clinically extremely vulnerable who we've supported throughout this crisis, those who are particularly vulnerable to, uh, to coronavirus. Everyone needs two injections 21 days apart. But this vaccine has to be stored at temperatures of minus 70 degrees Celsius, which presents huge logistical challenges. 50 UK hospitals are on standby to receive it. Doctors and nurses may be the first to get the shots. And delivery to care homes and people who can't travel is going to be hard. For the general public, special sites will be developed with the military's help for what will be the UK's biggest ever inoculation programme, a process that normally takes years to be accomplished in under eight months. Vaccine sceptics will ask if corners have been cut. No say the scientists. The MHRA's recommendation has been reached following an extremely thorough and scientifically rigorous review of all the evidence of safety, of effectiveness and of quality of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. I don't want to be vaccinated! The UK, like elsewhere, has its own share of those opposed to vaccinations but the government is not going to make it compulsory. I strongly urge uh, people to, to take up the vaccine, but it is no part of our uh, culture or our ambition in this country uh, to make uh, vaccines mandatory. That's not how we do things. The news of the vaccine's approval comes at a difficult time for the government. On Wednesday, the country emerged from an unpopular lockdown into a strict system of tiered restrictions. More than 50 of Boris Johnson's Conservative MPs voted against it on Tuesday night, damaging his authority. He will hope the rollout of this vaccine and others awaiting approval will let him ease restrictions and kickstart the economy in a return to normal life next spring. Simon McGregor Wood, TRT World. Now for more, let's go to Dr. Mohammed Munir in the UK. He's a virologist at the Lancaster University. Welcome to Money Talks. Now, we just heard from Simon's report that this is going to be the country's largest immunization drive, inoculation drive in its history. Walk us through how it's going to pan out, what kind of resources are going to be needed. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Mubin, for having me on the show. Uh, I think this is immense uh, logistical challenge to distribute vaccine in such a short time and in unprecedented conditions when we know that this is probably the last resort to really end this pandemic. I mean, particularly speaking about the UK, um, government has been very proactive in establishing the infrastructure, preparing the GPs um, and, and making them trained and, and really prioritizing the people that are uh, required to be immunized at the first instance. So as it has been spoken before, so the first approach is really to get into the most vulnerable uh, community, which is the care home. But because if we really look onto the data, most of the people that have been sadly, sadly died or within that group. So the emphasis should be and is to really protect that community. But that is again a really a challenge because this vaccine is requiring minus 70 Celsius uh, storage and the transportation. This mean, this mean that this vaccine first go into the healthcare system um, in minus 70 uh, storage. And then from there, it will be uh, either shipped to the care homes, which can be um, which, which can be uh, done at a uh, fridge uh, uh, temperature because this vaccine can be, apologies from my end, because this vaccine can be uh, uh, shipped to the uh, to the nearby places uh, up to five days at the fridge temperature. But that is it. That is the ultimate. You have to vaccinate uh, after uh, straight after that because that is really the challenge coming up in, in coming days. Dr. Munir, now we just heard there's a a large number of anti-vaxxers in the country. The Prime Minister says we are not going to make this mandatory. That's not how we do things here. Do you fear that might render this whole exercise ineffective? 
Um, I think this is one of the biggest challenge, particularly in the Europe, to have, have a vaccine hesitancy. I mean, in, in the United States, it is a lot more worse. I mean, 58 percent people think that they won't take the vaccine um, if and when it would become uh, approved. Here in the UK, we have around 28 percent people that, according to a survey, indicated that they might not take the vaccine. But I think uh, really the challenge here is the vaccine itself. I mean, once we um, uh, deploy that effectively in the vac in the community and the vaccine uh, induced immunity start to develop and there would be proven cases that there is no side effect and the vaccine is working in the field, I think we are going to improve the vaccine coverage. And uh, ultimately, we have to improve the vaccine coverage because until we don't really vaccinate uh, 60 to 70 percent of the population, we are not going to see the real benefit of this vaccine. So certainly this is something of concern. But I am very really positive that as vaccine rollout into the field, we will get uh, around that problem. Now, besides...